over. Let's go. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. Steaks, chicks, stacks. You and I are going to make a lot of money. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. It's Pharrell Coast to Coast in the biggest way possible right here on Sports Grid and Sports Grid Radio. Great to have you with us on a Tuesday, the first coast to coast of the new year. Happy New Year to everybody. 2024 in full effect. Carver High in for Scotty. He will be back, of course, on Thursday with, uh, of course, Warren Sharp Thursday. We'll get everything cooking for Week 18 in the NFL. Joe Lisi joins me momentarily, as always, on Tuesdays and Wednesdays here on C2C. We have a lot going on today. Uh, National championship is set in college football. We will discuss Michigan and Washington with some big wins last night. We haven't been here since last weekend in the NFL, so we will do all of that. And we have a loaded guest list, which we will go over uh, in a few minutes. We start, as always, with the birthday roll call. Here we go. Cole Caulfield, 23 years old today, as uh, Montreal Heads to Dallas to take on the Stars. Fernando Tatis Jr., 25. Brian Boucher, 47. David Cohn, legend, uh, 61. Edgar Martinez, 61. The abbreviated birthday roll call uh, here on a Tuesday. That's right. Uh, I didn't deem anyone else uh, worthy of being on the birthday roll call list today. So that is what you get. Uh, So there you go. Uh, We'll kick things off, of course. Last night, national championship uh, semis for college football, two outstanding games you know for as much as people cried about florida state not getting in and alabama is a you weren't thinking about that last night when you were watching those two games were you Uh, a couple of classics uh, that you got at the rose bowl and the sugar bowl of course michigan beating alabama in overtime last night you had washington beating texas in the late game uh very late too Uh, If you were on the East Coast, that's very late uh, that that game ended. Uh, So we have ourselves all set up for Monday in Houston between the Wolverines and the Huskies. Uh, Should be a fun one. In fact, uh, they will be in the same conference next year with Washington moving over to the Big Ten. Uh, We do want to welcome in all of our radio affiliates for El Coast to Coast on a Tuesday. Carver High in for Scotty Sports Grid Radio, Sirius XM, Channel 159, Sports Byline, and of course the mightier 1090 ESPN Radio in sunny Southern California. Great to have everybody with us here today. So me and Joe will kick things off talking about those games last night. Uh, Some unbelievable performances uh, on both sides. Penix was outstanding. Uh, The Michigan defense, outstanding. Uh, Milrow tried to do it all himself for Alabama, just couldn't get it done at the end. Maybe they uh, should learn on snapping the football uh, at Alabama. Nick's got something to, to practice, uh, in the off season uh, at the spring game. We can get somebody in there who can actually snap the football, uh, for Alabama. Uh, so there you go with that. Also our number one, Gabe Morenci will be with us. He was at the Rose bowl in Pasadena. Uh, so we will hear from Gabe, uh, as we always do in the first hour on coast to coast and Mike DeCourcy from the sporting news will be with us as well, uh, to talk about that game and some good college basketball, uh, that we have lined up for tonight as well. Hour two, uh, me and Joe will finish off because uh, I, I highly doubt that me and Joe are going to get through everything uh, with these games last night in one segment. So that's gonna that is going to spill into hour number two here on C to C. We'll finish off. We'll give you some numbers for Monday uh, as Michigan and Washington are going to get together as we mentioned in Houston. We have not been together as well since uh, NFL Week 17 wrapped up on Sunday uh, with no show yesterday. Uh, We are now back here today. We'll go over everything that happened quickly over the weekend, uh, all the scenarios for this coming week, week 18, the final week of the regular season in the NFL, including a big one Sunday night at Hard Rock. The Bills and the Dolphins will play for the AFC East title. Bills road favorites here uh, against a very banged up Miami Dolphin team. We have a couple of divisions still up for grabs. NFC South, three teams alive for it. AFC South, three teams alive for it. You have a win and get in game Saturday night between the Colts and the Texans and the winner could win the division. If the Jaguars were to lose on Sunday, uh, which I would have no problem with whatsoever, uh, because that would put the bills in before they even take a snap against the dolphins on Sunday night. Uh, You have the NFC still up for grabs. uh, If Dallas were ever to lose to Washington. Uh, So four division titles uh, that are still to be decided as you hit the final week, 
of the regular season. That is exactly how the NFL likes it. We will go through all of that. Davis Maddock, as always, is with us in hour number two. We will do the lion's share with Davis today. Uh, we'll talk a little football, and he's got some NBA plays for you for tonight. Then we will start to roll into some of these games for this week. We've got Mike Tomlin on sticking with Mason Rudolph. How could you not? With the way the Steeler offense has moved the football the last two weeks, they are in Baltimore on Saturday. Everybody seems to believe, and maybe it is going to happen, that Harbaugh is not going to play all his guys on Saturday. I don't believe that. I don't think that Har- maybe a half uh, he's not going to play his guys. But I think Harbaugh will have a few guys out there uh, for the Ravens. we got D'Amico Ryans on the Texans and the Colts on Saturday night. Sean McDermott, Bills and the Fish on Sunday night at Hard Rock. Nick Sirianni, talk about frustrating, losing to the Cardinals at home on Sunday. Now, that was frustrating. Eagles now in a spot where they're probably going to have to go on the road unless uh, Washington can do them a favor down there at FedEx against the Cowboys. Uh, Eagles are going to have to hit the hit the streets, which was really unfathomable a few weeks ago when they were 10-1. and one. Uh, But that seems like that's going to be the case for Sirianni and the crew. Uh, so we'll t- discuss that as well. Green Bay can get in the playoffs with a win at home over the Bears. That could be very tough for them. They couldn't do it last year against the Lions with Aaron Rodgers. This year, Justin Fields may be finishing off a final exclamation point to stay as the Bears franchise quarterback by knocking the Packers out at Lambeau coming up on Sunday. So we've got the NFL best and the worst against the spread as we do every week here as well. Final hour uh, on C2C. Rick Haro in the house today, our sports business and legal insider. We will hear from Rick. Adam Kaplan uh, with us on a Tuesday because we didn't have him yesterday. We'll go through all the stuff we just talked about, some of the scenarios for this week, our sports grid NFL insider will be with us, and then uh, we will go through everything for tonight. We have NBA tonight. That is right. Chicago was in Philadelphia against the Sixers. Remember, they beat them there a couple of weeks ago. San Antonio is in Memphis. We have Brooklyn and the Pelicans. Boston and OKC, a good one tonight at the Chesapeake. Orlando is in Golden State against the Warriors. Big West Coast trip for the Magic, who, of course, have gotten out to a pretty good first couple months here. We'll see if they can build that. And Charlotte, who I feel like has been out on the West Coast for – three weeks uh, are still there. They're in Sacramento tomato tonight against the Kings as the calendar flips to 2024 in January. That also means that college basketball is now in full effect conference play all over the place. Wall to wall tonight. We have some good ones, including Purdue at Maryland, North Carolina is at Pitt tonight. Cuse and Duke at Cameron uh, Butler visits St. John's Northwestern and Illinois. So lots of conference action now. Uh, going forward all the way to March Madness and hockey. Enormous slate uh, tonight in the NHL, uh, where we have, I believe it is 14 games, or just over maybe 11 or 12 games. Uh, But we got double-digit game count in the NHL, including Carolina at the Garden against the Rangers. The Islanders are in Colorado against the Avalanche. Uh, How about the Winter Classic yesterday? Nice job by the Kraken uh, as the home dog. Uh, They're outside taking care of business against Vegas. So, we got a lot to do, a big coast-to-coast, the first one of 2024. Carver High in for Scotty. Joe Lisi joins me momentarily here on Sports Grid and Sports Grid Radio. A Tuesday C2C. We get everything rolling with you right here on the grid right after this. It was going in. It hit the hit the upright and bounced out and did not uh, go in. There's more scoring in an MLS soccer game than there is uh, this cotton ball. The Chargers didn't know what the hell to do with uh, Staley for years. They're a clown show in chief. Denver's got this issue, Gabe. Like the Chiefs <laughs> must just be sitting there going, "Wow, what a bunch of brain trust we work with in this division." Sports rage late night only on Sports Grid. <laughs> Some things involving their offense the past couple weeks and moving forward. Number one last year, number 25 this year. Much slower. Jalen Hurts is taking far longer in his dropbacks. He's holding on to the ball for longer. And yet, despite holding on to the ball longer, he's throwing the ball shorter. Now, that doesn't make any sense. If you're holding on to the ball longer, it should be because there's routes developing further down the field. Pharrell Coast to Coast. 
only on SportsGrid. We spent all offseason where the NFL said, hey, just so you guys know, running backs don't matter. If we then this year give the MVP to a running back, the irony. I am disappointed that they lost to FAU because secretly I don't really like this FAU team very much. I don't, I don't know. They're just not for me. And now they've completely legitimized the Owls. Game time decisions only on Sports Grid. The Bostonian versus the Book. 56% is really good. Anything close to 60 is retirement. Mm-hmm. level stuff so there's way more people on the lower side of that you have to learn how to manage that this is a game of give and take i mean or come in quick and hit them and get out the bostonian versus the book sports grid your 24 7 sports wagering network fantasy sports today they were saying there's no way he could not possibly do this he won't hold out pro league soccer the powered by marco teams in the league they have 80 goals so far. college football today the hawks team total in the first half is point five zero point pro five football today interesting drops in this game but i would be cautious laying this number here with the Houston Texans. In-game live all-access. In terms of these wild cards and in terms of the playoff. In-game live prime time. Uh, Rich, I don't know, man. This is this is just been one of those games that doesn't make a lick of sense In-game live overtime. You want to give you over three to one on a pretty good team. It's hard not to take some flyers. Football full circle. Well, NFL officials stink. They always will stink and they'll always ruin the game. Yeah, that's, that's just part of what it is. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Oh, what's up? You watching the game? Or maybe the one later? Put a little BetMGM action on it and now any game becomes the game. When you got overs and unders, you're in it every time they throw the ball, kick the ball, dribble the ball. Maybe it's not even a ball. Who needs a ball? Now that bet's got you watching every inning, half, round, period, set, hole, a lap. Right from the edge of your seat. Hit him with the promo. are back for El Coast to Coast here with you on a Tuesday. Carver High in for Scotty. We'll get Joe in here in a moment. But first, we, of course, have to tell you that BetMGM has you set up uh, with their $1,500 first bet offer. That's right. This is for all new BetMGM Sportsbook account users. you got to download the BetMGM Sportsbook app on iOS or Android or visit BetMGM.com. Sign up and use the bonus code SG1500 and deposit at least $10 into your BetMGM Sportsbook account, place your first wager, and receive up to $1,500 back in bonus bets if the bet loses. If the bet does lose, your bonus bets will be available once your initial wager is settled. That is BetMGM's $1,500 first bet offer. Make sure you use bonus code SG1500. All right, every Tuesday and Wednesday here on Coast to Coast, you get the extended version of the somewhat popular, I'm just kidding, uh, it's highly popular, uh, Sports Grid radio show, uh, Carver and Lisi, which airs weeknights at 8 p.m. East uh, on Sports Grid Radio. That, of course, is with myself and formerly uh, the encyclopedia <laughs> of college football because you're looking at the new uh, encyclopedia oh. of college football, formerly the encyclopedia of college football. And that, of course, is the one, the only... Go for the two, uh, Joe Lisi. Hi, Joe. How are you? Okay, champ. Okay, champ. You caught me in bowl season. You got me by one game. If I don't get that touchdown by Tennessee and they were trying to score, Carver, up 35 nothing. I needed three more yards to get that. I think I would have. we would have been deadlocked even. Gutless effort by Liberty yesterday. But how about the Michigan Wolverines? And Washington step it up outright. Outright. Love it. How, uh, and I know about, you capitalized on it, too. You capitalized on all your great picks. 18 wow. loaves under each arm. 
Not quite, but I needed yes. that overtime. I needed overtime to get that over. Uh, but it, it was did. still a winner, uh, the over in that game. And by the way, just so the bookmaking's correct, I ended up beating you by two games, uh, just so you know. Oh, 28 13. Wait, 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 wait a second. We still have the national championship game. So I, You're right. I, an, under and a, an under and a total, it's not in the books yet. Wait a second, wait a second. So yet. now so now you want to make multiple picks for the national uh, you're two games back. If we make one pick like we do, you can't get me. If you beat me, you lose by one. Well, so that's we, it. We don't pick a side in the total. Oh, we're changing the rules because you're down two. <laughs> you want to change the rules for the national championship <laughs> game. All right. Well, and a well, we'll think, well now and we're, a we're now we're throwing now we're throwing the little trinkets in there. We're starting uh, to put everything else involved uh with this. Uh and just so you know, since we're on the topic of this, I already clinched the NFL with one week to go. Uh, NFL's How done if I've already. Last week? Did right. I do get well, over not, 500? Not, not good. I hit the skids. I hit the <laughs> skids down the street. I think it was your I think it was your fourth straight one and three week. Uh, so you're and not closing with a flurry. Some the Eagles. And, you know, some of my other co-hosts blame me for betting the Eagles when they played San Francisco. I single-handedly okay. turned around the mojo. I used to be uh, hot with the totals, and then I went to the sides. And that's what happened. So I don't know. That's the rumor going around. All that, I know that... is how does a pistol <laughs> last night? Michigan you... and Washington, yes. that's all that matters. That how is all pistol? that matters, Joe. Why don't we go there? Uh, tonight on the radio show, we'll get further into uh, giving each other the business about how I beat you in both of the picks uh, there, the Bulls and the NFL regular season. But before we'll do that later on, Joe, let's talk about these two games because I said this at the top, and I told you this the day that they came out. As much as everybody wanted to cry and complain that Florida State wasn't going to play in these games and that Florida State deserved to be there, the night of the games, Joe, nobody would care anymore. And those two games last night were so good that nobody cares anymore uh, that they weren't in there because you had two classic games. Let's start uh, with the sun-drenched field in Pasadena, the granddaddy of them all, the Rose Bowl. And it was a classic, Joe, 2020 they go to overtime, a doubleheader here for you on ESPN. Corum putting Michigan ahead, and then Milrow going nowhere on the fourth down attempt to tie it. Here we go. Michigan tight ends in the ballgame. They hand it to Corum again and makes a cut. First down. Spins and scores. Blake Corum puts Michigan on top in overtime. That's Williams in motion. Low snap. Milrow stopped. Michigan makes a stand and comes up with a milestone playoff victory. There you go, Joe. Uh, there it was Fowler on ESPN with Herb Street. They had the Rose Bowl, a classic game, Joe. It really was. Uh, and and I got to tell you, like, both teams uh, made mistakes. I think both teams had opportunities to – they were almost trying to throw that game away, whether it was Michigan special teams play, which was absolutely dreadful. Alabama couldn't block uh, when Milrow was dropping back the pass. Um, but that being said, Joe, it, it was a game that you're probably going to remember for a little while here when you have two classic uh, schools going up against each other. What did you think of it? I thought Michigan took the game to Alabama. Interior offense and defensive line play is what allowed Michigan to win that ball game. We talked about it in pregame. Entering that ball game, Alabama had allowed 43 total sacks. Jalen Milrow was under pressure continuously in terms of that ball game. And in the end, J.J. McCarthy fared to be the better, more consistent quarterback. And when the game was on the line, I thought Tommy Reese, Nick Saban got a little too conservative that call in terms of the end. I will say I was screaming at the top of my lungs. I was happy about that because that's exactly what I needed to stop there. But, you know, credit Michigan. They took it to Alabama and they deserved to win that ball game. Uh, they absolutely deserve to win the ball game. You're so right, Joe, about Reese and Saban. I have no idea what they were doing um, on that. Once they got the first and goal down there in the overtime, I, I thought all the plays were – didn't they throw like a little screen to the side for like yeah. a half yard to start? Like yep. I, I thought that the play calling was awful. I thought the kid – I mean, it was. they were blaming Milrow on TV, Joe. I know you were listening to it too on some of them, but like, can we snap the ball properly? Like this is the this is a college football playoff game, and I felt like every fourth snap, Milrow's like throwing his arm to the side. Throwing, I get it. He's got to catch you know the ones that are near him. But Joe, that was sloppy uh, by them on. And, and I don't think it mattered, Joe, on the last play. As bad, even though the snap was low, 
He was going nowhere. Why would they were trying to run up the middle uh, on a play like that? Get him outside, Joe. Let him try to do something with his legs or throw the football. Just a brutal job. No, terrible. You're right. And and again, I think that, that when the people looked at that ball game and saw Michigan as a favorite, everybody thought that Michigan wouldn't be up to par in terms of the interior, that Alabama would take that game toe-to-toe with the Michigan Wolverines. And you know what? We've seen glimpses of Alabama not being as dominant this season offensively and defensively, and Michigan exploited that. So it was a great effort. They they you know whipped, they withstood the the final five or six minutes because they held Alabama to that critical field goal, which allowed their offense to tie it up and send the game into overtime. Bama scores a touchdown in that that final three minutes. It's signed, sealed, delivered for the Crimson Tide. And even though that kid bobbled that punt, Joe, inside the five, uh, the, 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 for him to grab it and make sure he got away from that goal line uh, was a massive play as well because there was a lot of dangerous potential there, whether it was Alabama falling on it in the end zone or even a safety or any other things that could have went on in that spot. So, And I know he, he didn't do that all year. They basically had a new returner in the game. Uh, they end up winning the football game. Joe, I'll have uh, Harbaugh and Saban for you later on. We, of course, also have to talk about Texas and Washington, which also had a great finish down in New Orleans at the Sugar Bowl. We'll hear from Gabe, his trip to Pasadena, Joe, and then we'll finish the games later. From coast to coast on the grid, we're back after this. Quarterback at quarterback. We're going to lay some juice. We're going to have some golf prices. And we're going to go right in the middle. Because I don't know what they're doing. To me, they're in a complete rebuild, Kev. Go run, run, run. That's where overbackers on this 51 and a half shot. So right now, we saw a little bit more over money, but it's hovering right around. The winner of this game will be the division. Favorite. I don't care if they win because all we care about is the money, baby. The money. Pro football today. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. The Bostonian versus the book. 56% is really good. Anything close to 60 is retirement mm-hmm. level stuff. So there's way more people on the lower side of that. You have to learn how to manage that. This is a game of give and take. I mean, or come in quick and hit them and get out. The Bostonian versus the book. We spent all offseason where the NFL said, hey, just so you guys know, running backs don't matter. If we then this year give the MVP to a running back, the irony. I am disappointed that they lost to FAU because secretly I don't really like this FAU team very much. I I don't know. They're just not for me. And now they've completely legitimized the hour. Game time decisions only on SportsGrid. It was Brock Purdy as a hefty odds-on favorite, nearing $2 ahead of the marquee matchup on Christmas night out in Santa Clara between the 49ers and the Ravens. You know, Lamar Jackson, I know everybody says Christian McCaffrey, he does everything. It sets the offense up and all that. All of it's true. But Lamar Jackson sets the football team up, not just the offense, everybody. The early line, only on Sports Grid. Sports Grid. Your 24-7 sports wagering network. Fantasy Sports Today. They were saying there's no way. He could not possibly do this. He won't hold out. Pro League Soccer powered by Marco. scoring teams in the league. They have 80 goals so far. College Football Today. The Hawks team total in the first half is point. Five, zero point Pro five. football today. Interesting props in this game, but I would be cautious laying this number here with the Houston Texans. In game live, all to access. The NFC in terms of these wild cards and in terms of the playoff. Picture. In game live, prime time. Uh, Rich, I don't know, man. This is this has just been one of those games that doesn't make a lick of sense. In here, game Mark. live, overtime. You want to give you over three to one on a pretty good team. It's hard not to take some flyers. Football full circle. Well. 
NFL officials stink. They always will stink, and they'll always ruin the game. You know, that's, that's just part of what it is. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. We are back, Pharrell, coast to coast here on a Tuesday. Carver High in for Scotty on Sports Grid and Sports Grid Radio. First show of the new year. Happy New Year to everybody, 2024. It was a big Happy New Year uh, for Gabe Morenci, of course. He's with us every day here. Sports Rage late night, 10 p.m. East, right here on the grid as Gabe was in the Rose Bowl, Pasadena. The sun shining on the sideline out there. The granddaddy of them all. Unless you want to try to leave the place after the game's over. Uh, and then it's not the granddaddy of them all. But, Gabe, uh, you were there. You saw it all. Michigan and Alabama. You were at a classic, Gabe. I, I tell you what, uh, Carver. Going to a Rose Bowl and seeing Michigan in a Rose Bowl has always been on my bucket list. And it exceeded expectations. You know, clearly them winning. If they would have lost, it would have been different. Like, you know, I mean, then it really would have been a living hell after the football game. But the fact that they won. But... Everything that you just said, I got goosebumps about. You feel it, bro, when you're there. Like, if you're a diehard college football fan, like, you have to go to this stadium at some point for a Rose Bowl. Like, you feel the Keith Jackson. Like, you know, you see when I when I walked up and I saw the Rose Bowl and the actual, like, the sign at the stadium, first thing I thought of was Keith Jackson. I was like, man, I can't believe I'm here. It was just sort of like, and I'm, you know, I've been, in, I've been, you know, we're kind of jaded in sports. You know, we've... You could take things for granted. I didn't. I was like, I can't believe I'm actually here. I can't believe the tailgate. Like, the dude, it was on a golf course, Carver. Like, I actually said, I said, man, I did a video. I go, man, I've never tailgate at such a classy place before. There was literally like a Bob Hope-like lounge and like, <laughs> like, the, like, it was like on a, it was the Greeks. I said, this is like nicer than a golf course. And I looked over and I realized we actually are on a golf course. They, oh, there's the green. We're actually, like, tailgating on a golf course. They had fireworks going off, like, every 10 minutes before the game. They scaring the hell out of everybody all the time. But, you know, like you said, the sun, the, the, the shadows start to come in. It's super cool, too. You have fans on both sides of the stadium. So, like, they played the Killers, and the Michigan fans went in, and Bama played their song. It really was special, man. And then you get into the actual game itself, Carver, and that was one for the ages, bro. I tell you, the Rose Bowl often delivers. I I ended up um, I ended up sitting next to a doctor, an ER doctor, and he wasn't a Michigan fan, and he wasn't a, a um, he wasn't an Alabama fan. He's from LA, and he goes, oh, "This is like my ninth Rose Bowl." He goes, "I just come because they're always just epic, great games." And lo and behold, we had another classic, didn't we? Certainly did, uh, Gabe. Tell me about like you were in there and just getting ready for the overtime. It was a weird game. Me and Joe were just talking about it in the sense that, you know, Michigan had really poor special teams play. Uh, they had the kid back there that hadn't fielded punts all year. He made it an adventure. You had Alabama who couldn't snap the football properly to Milrow all day long. Both teams had mistakes all over the place. And I guess that's just kind of how you get to that winding road of 2020 overtime. It deserved it that way. I thought Alabama also, after Coram scored, Gabe, I don't know what Saban and, and Reese were doing down there inside the 10-yard line, but I thought all four plays they called on first, second, third, and fourth and goal were awful uh, down there at the goal line. Well, I got to be honest. Thank God. Like you said, what, what was that last play, Carver? So what did you think? That Milrow was just going to run up the middle through Yeah, like <laughs> through what, everybody? What was that? Like there was no creativity. Was they said, all oh, the snap was low. It didn't matter, bro. That wasn't going yeah, anywhere. No. Like, if that was your season on the line and you decided, yeah, let's just have our quarterback try to run through the best defensive line in the country, right? Like, how'd that work out? Michigan were so dominant in so many different ways, but suddenly they're losing the game, Carver. Like, yeah. And you know what's crazy, bro? Michigan special teams is normally second to none. Like, their field goal kicking is impeccable. Like, they don't miss extra points. They don't miss field goals. Like, I think nerves were real. We saw it. And there's something to it, bro. And I think there's got to be a little bit of a concern going into the Washington game next week in which, Carver, this is the third playoff game in a row in Michigan. They're not ready to play. Like, right. Dude, they got lucky that the kid was out of bounds on Alabama. J.J. McCarthy throws an interception potentially on the first play. 
they fumble they fumble the the punt it was an absolute disaster to start the football game but with all that being stated they still won the game and it shows this the resiliency of this football team you know what i thought a big turning point of the game we can get into the fourth and twos and all this but you know what to me carver when they went to overtime i don't buy this let's see what we need first not in a game like that i was yeah. happy I was like, we just scored to tie the game, and you're giving us the ball again. I saw McCarthy like, yeah, yeah, give me the ball. And the fat Carver that Michigan scored so quickly, bro, you know what I mean? They gave it to Corm, and it was like, boom, 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 touchdown. All right, guys, be careful what you wish for, because now you need to score a touchdown. And then you right. saw right away the pressure was on, man, on Alabama, and they didn't deal with it well on that last possession. I think, Gabe, that strategy works if it's a game like Texas and Washington was. If it's a game where you're scoring up and down the field and your offenses are moving and you – fine. You know, to put your defense out there first. Maybe you get a stop and you, and you feel comfortable that you're going to be able to match. In a game like that with Michigan and Alabama where offense was hard to come by. I mean, it was – both defenses were doing the job. I'm with you. I, I don't think it's a great decision. I know it's the by-the-book decision. But neither offense showed they were capable of being able to say, ah, you know what, they scored. This is an easy match for us. It wasn't that type of a game. And it was just a confidence level, Carver. So Michigan ties the game. They're confident. They're going crazy. Crowd's going crazy. They score in overtime again. How, like, you just fired up that defense even more. It's like, all right, guys, no. The, the, the end, the finish line is now. We get the stop. We win the football game, and we're going to the national championship. Absolute uh, epic, epic, epic uh, night. Classic, classic football game. And I will tell you, uh, Carver, Alabama fans, nothing but class, bro. Yeah. I'm telling you, like, nothing but class. Like, I've heard our boy Drew, Drew Martin, uh, went to Auburn, and he told me, watch out, man, some of these Bama fans and this and that. And I imagine it's a little bit different when you got the campus frat boys, because let's be real, yeah. Carver, you need money to go to the Rose Bowl, bro. It's like, you know oh, what I mean? Sort of like the, the – <laughs> so sort of the older, richer band of fed. But I'm just saying, like, no one was like, F you, or there was no – they were all like, we hope you all win a championship next week. You're a hell of a football team. Like, they were they were gracious. Like, it was very, very cool. Like, that, there was no – I didn't see one anything, like, conflict throughout the entire day anywhere. I think there is a huge difference between sending, you know, going to the Rose Bowl. It's hard for all the frats to get to the Rose Bowl. I think it's a little different. Like, you saw a lot of that at the Texas-Washington game game because I think it's a little bit of an easier trip, a cheaper trip. Yeah, to Marty, yeah, yeah, New Orleans and all that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Going to the game. <laughs> going, to, going to the Rose Bowl on the other side of the country, that is a whole other ball game here. and You need a lot of scratch uh, to be able to get that uh, and to get out of there. All right, so. They will play Washington Monday night in Houston. Saw it open. It was six and a half. Immediately went down to four and a half. Washington's offense, uh, they, they were great against Texas game. But I'll tell you, that DeBoer scares me. Uh, some of the decisions that he made in that fourth quarter for Washington. And that game almost came back to bite him. And I would be very leery of him next week against Michigan. I'll tell you what, I've had a lot of respect. And, you know, I live in the Pacific Northwest, uh, Carver. You know, we follow all teams, but I get Seattle TV, bro. You know what I'm saying? So I, yeah. I get to Seattle. I get to watch the Huskies postgame shows and the weekly shows and all that type stuff, like with the Seahawks. So I follow this football team closely. Man, they're a hell of a football team, Carver. They and they're a lot like Michigan. And they're going to the Big Ten, right? So the winner of the national yeah. champion is going to be the Big Ten next year. They're going to they're the Big Ten. They're a lot like Michigan fifth. in a sense. They're, they're playing yeah, like, October 5th. Yeah, they're they're playing in Seattle. Yeah. Um, <laughs> The Joe Moore Award for the best offensive line in the country. Last year, Michigan won. This year, Washington won. Yeah. So, they want similarities right there. Um, they're very physical. They can play different styles. And I know Washington is going to get tired of being the underdog carver. And they feed off it. They know what the point spreads are, right? They knew they were 10-point underdogs against the Ducks. They knew they were four-and-a-half-point underdogs uh, in this football game. And they said, we're sick of it. You guys don't live fine. We feed off of this. And lo and behold, they're underdogs again. But with that being stated, don't you get the feeling Harbaugh's too close to the finish line here? Yep. Like Michigan have been to hell and back here, Carver. They have found ways. They've been on the ropes, man. They were down fourth and two, season on the line. That was gut check going for it, bro, at that time, bro. Mm -hmm. Right? It was like, all right, we're not going to be denied. This is it. I think Michigan's a more complete football team uh, than Washington. And you know what the difference is? I think it'll be that the fact that 
I think Michigan will be able to create some pressure on Michael Penix. Yeah, I agree with you. They're going to get pressure. And you know what? I think it is a perfect storybook ending because I do think, Gabe, that if he brings a national championship back to Michigan, I think that is going to – he'll feel like he can close that door and go back to the NFL. I think that would be a perfect door-closed moment for him. I did what I said I was going to do. I won a national championship here. Let me go take a bazillion dollars from the L.A. Chargers uh, and go back to the NFL. I think I think that's clearly what he's going to do. And who are the only coaches? Barry Switzer and Jimmy Johnson? Yeah. Win a college yeah. championship and uh, Super Bowl, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. You, you know the, how the Harbaugh's are. You know he wants to get that Super Bowl ring like his brother has. Yeah. To match it. You know what I mean? But it, yep. it's going to be nice to get that national championship. But I, I, I've always got that feeling, Carver. I don't know, though, bro. He's an interesting dude, as you know, right? He's an enigma. So He is. He is. Who knows? He, he they win the championship. Dude. He's like Bo Schembechler, bro. They build statues. Yeah. He's like a legend for life, for real. <laughs> he is the new face of Michigan for eternity. But I get what you're saying. I think in, in his mind, I win a national championship. I did what I said I was going to do. I brought it to you. Uh, more can take over and do a great job. And I'm going to go win a Super Bowl now and win both. Uh, no doubt. Gabe, uh, we'll get a little bit more into this tomorrow, uh, but we only got like 10 seconds now. I'm a little nervous, Gabe, that basically everybody has already said the Bills are beating Miami Sunday night. Like it's a done deal oh boy. Uh, for everybody. It's I'm already a done thinking deal. about the other scenarios. I hope the Steelers I, I, lose and the Giants I lose. <laughs> I'd like them in before they even start the game. I'd like them in before yes. it starts. Uh, Gabe, nice. Sports nice. Rage late night, 10 p.m. East on the grid. See you later, Gabe. Quarterback at quarterback. We're going to lay some juice. We're going to have some dog prices. And we're going to go right in the middle. Because I don't know what they're doing. To me, they're in a complete rebuild, Kev. Go run, run, run. That's where overbackers on this 51 and a half shot. So right now, we saw a little bit more over money, but it's hovering right around. The winner of this game will be the division. Fan. I don't care if they win because all we care about is the money, baby. The money. Pro football today. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. The Bostonian versus the book. 56% is really good. Anything close to 60 is retirement mm -hmm. level stuff. So there's way more people on the lower side of that. You have to learn how to manage that. This is a game of give and take. I mean, or come in quick and hit them and get out. The Bostonian versus the book. We spent all offseason where the NFL said, hey, just so you guys know, running backs don't matter. If we then this year give the MVP to a running back, the irony, I am disappointed that they lost to FAU because secretly I don't really like this FAU team very much. I don't, I don't know. They're just not for me. And now they've completely legitimized the hour. Game time decisions only on SportsGrid. It was Brock Purdy as a hefty odds on favorite, nearing $2 ahead of the marquee matchup on Christmas night out in Santa Clara between the 49ers and the Ravens. You know, Lamar Jackson, I know everybody says Christian McCaffrey, he does everything. It sets the offense up and all, the, all of it's true. But Lamar Jackson sets the football team up, not just the offense, everybody. The early line, only on Sports Grid. Sports Grid. Your 24-7 sports wagering network. Fantasy Sports Today. They were saying there's no way. He could not possibly do this. He won't hold out. Pro League Soccer, the powered by Marco. The teams in the league. They have 80 goals so far. College Football Today. The Hawks' team total in the first half is points. 
Pro football today. Interesting drops in this game, but I would be cautious laying this number here with the Houston Texans. In game live all access. In terms of these wild cards and in terms of the playoff. In game live prime time. Uh, Rich, I don't know, man. This is this is just been one of those games that doesn't make a lick of sense. In game Mark. live overtime. You want to give you over three to one on a pretty good team. It's hard not to take some flyers. Football full circle. Well. NFL officials stink. They always will stink, and they'll always ruin the game. Yeah, that's, that's just part of what it is. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. And we are back for El Coast to Coast on a Tuesday. Carver High in for Scotty here on Sports Grid and Sports Grid Radio. Great to have everybody with us here today. Great every week uh, and for the first time this year, of course, to have our man Mike DeCourcy from the Sporting News uh, joining us. And January 2nd also means college basketball is in like complete full swing. I mean, the schedule from tonight all the way to March uh, is going to be outstanding. So we'll do some of those games with Mike. Uh, coming up here while he's with us today. Mike, good to see you. Happy New Year, my man. Happy New Year to you, Mike. Let's start with last night, though, in college football, uh, because I know that I know that when the pairings came out, a lot of people were upset. You thought that Florida State should have been in. Uh, a lot of people did as well, thought the committee got it wrong. I think that last night, though, is one of those times where I don't think anybody was thinking about that, Mike, because the two games were so great and they were so outstanding and they had so much drama in both of them that a lot of people left saying maybe the committee did get it right, uh, even though they probably didn't. <laughs> they didn't. They didn't get it right unless, Mike, it's a television show and not a right. legitimate championship <laughs> enterprise. As a television show, it could not have been better. Uh, maybe uh, have Seinfeld come out at halftime and tell jokes, but I don't know how else you could have made it a, a better uh, television production than it was over the course of those two games. It, it was wonderful football. It was as entertaining as could be. One game goes into the over, overtime. One goes down to the final play. It couldn't have been better in that sense. But Florida State still had earned the opportunity to compete for a championship and was not granted it on the basis of uh, SEC uh, longtime superiority, Alabama's brand, uh, and the fact that Florida State was somewhat diminished by the absence of its starting quarterback. That All of that should not have been a factor. And it's, again, why next year we don't have to worry about that. You, you can yes. seed it, however, but you can't deny next year uh, the next Florida State, which wins the ACC, say, and completes a perfect season, you can't deny them an entry. And that's the beautiful thing about 2024 in college football. It's what we've been waiting for for a century. Uh, it certainly is, and it is, it will be here. And I can't wait for it to get to that 12-game playoff uh, next year. Uh, it was exciting. Now we're going to get uh, a preview of a Big Ten matchup for next year. Michigan and Washington in the national championship game. They're going to play, I think it's... October 3rd or 5th uh, in Seattle on the regular season schedule next year. But they have an even bigger game, Mike, coming up Monday night in Houston for it all. I was just talking to Gabe, and we were saying, like, it kind of feels like, and this is the you know the two best teams, undefeated, both absolutely uh, did everything they could to get here. It feels like this would be quite the way for Harbaugh to kind of close the book, right? Like, if he brought a national championship back to Michigan – I think that even the Michigan faith will be like, if he goes to the NFL, takes a bazillion dollars from the Chargers to go coach Justin Herbert, everyone will be like, all right, you know what? He brought us a title. Oh, there's no doubt that they would be like that. But also, if he were to depart at that point, he's missing the best part of being a championship coach, which is yeah. that, you know, every every time you get your, your, your bagel, it's already buttered. Uh, every time... You buy a beer, someone else pays. All the rest of that. It, it would be walking away from what the best part of winning a title. Uh, so I'm not sure whether or not that's the direction he'll go. I know there's a lot of speculation about that. It's pretty rare for someone to win a championship and then go and take another job, even in a different league. It just, it just doesn't happen very often. 
So I wouldn't necessarily expect it to happen in this circumstance if he wins. I don't really expect it to happen if he loses either, but we'll see. Uh, I know like it, it makes for great conversation and and that's why it, it gets generated. But usually when somebody has a great job, they're not in that big a hurry to walk away from it. Now, uh, whether or not the NCAA investigation into the sideline uh, scandal, uh, whether or not that might play a role, then maybe maybe that would see Harbaugh on his way out to voluntarily to go to San Diego. Or excuse me, L.A. Uh, now. I, I will always LA, call it. Yes. It should always, it should still be San yes. Diego, Mike. That's why we all still say that, because the Chargers should still be in San Diego. Uh, will Harbaugh win on Monday night? Let me ask you that. Yeah, I think the what what Michigan has in this matchup that I keep wondering whether or not Washington can find a way around is that pass rush, especially on the interior. I, I, Texas did a nice job of pressuring uh, Michael Penix, but they didn't put him down. And and I think that 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 almost certainly Michigan will and fairly regularly, and they'll pressure him fairly regularly. And I I just don't see Washington being able to counter that aspect of it. I think that becomes the difference. They're going to have to score because their defense isn't good enough to to keep down Michigan's running attack and the complementary ability of J.J. McCarthy. Uh, I, I just don't think they can keep them down completely, so they're going to have to score. And I think where that scoring gets disrupted is with that Michigan pass rush. Certainly does. Uh, Going to be a fun one on Monday night down in Houston. Next for you, Mike, how about the Steelers? I, I got to tell you, I think me, me and you even talked about this. When they lost those two games to Arizona and New England at home over a four-day span, you just you had to figure, I mean, the, pull the plug, season's over, you know, nice run, Tomlin streak's probably going to end, all of those things. And sure enough, insert Mason Rudolph, insert a couple of wins against the Bengals and the Seahawks, and now you're sitting here with the last game of the year. Now they still need a little bit of help, obviously. They need either the Jaguars to lose or the Bills to lose on Sunday night. But the fact that the Steelers are even still in this thing, Mike, is pretty amazing coming up on Saturday against the Ravens. It really is. And I I think that what's missed and what's lost, look, I I didn't think that Mason Rudolph uh, was going to be this, but I thought he would be, after having seen Mitch Trubisky for a half, then a game, I thought that, that, that Tr- Mitch had shown that he wasn't really the next best step, or at the very least that Mason Rudolph couldn't do any worse. And uh, I, But I, I also think that what often is lost is is something like, if he'd gone to India as the starter for the third game in the sequence, uh, they'd probably lose that game anyway, because... They lost the two starting safeties in that game. They were already down two linebackers. They couldn't cover anything on the outside. They were getting shredded because of that. They couldn't fix it all on the fly. And they were probably going to lose anyway that game. So it actually helped them to be able to go into the next week with Mason Rudolph having uh, no, almost nothing on tape since 2021, just exhibition stuff. Uh, and I think that helped them. And I think it built his confidence and made him better able to go to Seattle. The revisionist stuff never considers those sorts of elements, but I do believe that it helped him for his first game as a starter to be that game against Cincinnati. It certainly did. And I don't like this other stuff. I don't know where this stuff came from. And I watched Pickett talk about it this morning, Mike, but where this story came from, that Pickett was like unhappy and he didn't refuse to be the backup. Where it's amazing, Mike. Where the, how, how does this stuff get built up? Because Pickett doesn't seem like that type of guy. Even you listen to him this morning talking to the media, he doesn't seem like that type of guy to be like, I'm not the backup. I'm supposed to be the starter. So there's always got to be some kind of rumbling, even when things are going good uh, over there. Mike, I, I I don't think there's anybody on the planet stupid enough to do that. I really don't. Right. Because think about it. what's at stake. If he returns at some point, probably not. Obviously not this year, but. If he returns at some point as the starter for the Steelers and establishes himself as a long-term starter, uh, and I'm not saying that's going to happen, but that's a that, I, certainly in his mind, that's a possibility. That's a $100 million plus decision. If he doesn't establish himself as a starter, but he does establish himself as a long-term NFL backup, 
That's tens of millions of dollars. So nobody's stupid enough to throw a fit and not dress as the third string quarterback over uh, hurt feelings because no one's going to put that much money at risk over something like that. So I, I totally don't buy that story. I just don't, I, I, I'm around too many different uh, people in athletics and like not all of them are, you know, splitting the atom, but no one is going to risk a hundred million dollars or $50 million or even $10 million on, oh, my feelings are hurt because I'm not the starting quarterback now that I'm healthy and ready to play. No doubt. I agree with you 100%, Mike. Uh, it makes no sense whatsoever. All right, college basketball. Now, for us, college basketball has been going for six-plus weeks already because uh, we're involved with it every night. But for a lot of people, Mike, they don't really start to tune in until now. New year, football just about over, college football over, only one game left, conference schedules in full swing, and that really begins tonight. We've got several games uh, of pretty good importance tonight. Let's start North Carolina and Pitt, number eight UNC. Both of these teams, nine wins off to pretty good starts. Uh, nice trip here for Carolina into Pitt tonight. Yeah, this is an important game for Pitt because they, uh, they, they failed in several early season tests, and then they started their conference season on uh, – they, they started the, the, the meat of their conference season on the road – at Syracuse and weren't able to hold a, a second half lead. So it's a big game for them. And it's also huge for Carolina because they want to take a run at the top couple of seed lines in the NCAA tournament, as well as an ACC championship. And you have to win on the road uh, against teams that appear to be beatable by the best team. So you have to do that if you're going to win the ACC. Uh, I, I think it's a huge game for both teams, uh, seven o'clock on ESPN. And I, 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 right now, I just I, I don't see Pitt being in position uh, to play the level of basketball they'll need to play at this stage. Maybe by the second half of the season, they'd be ready to win this game. But I don't, I don't think they're there quite yet. Uh, two of the teams that you have on the one line right now, it's never too early for brackets, baby, uh, are in action tonight. That is UConn and Purdue. Purdue, Mike, uh, has themselves a trip to Maryland tonight to College Park. Yeah, they lost their first road game uh, at Northwestern earlier in the year, which is a, a place they lost in the regular season last year. And what do you know, their second Big Ten road game is in another place they lost a year ago while they were winning just about every other game they played short of the NCAA tournament. So it's a rough test for them. And Maryland, after a really difficult start, has started to play better. They've, they've guarded well for the entire year, reasonably well, for most of the year anyway. Uh, but they, they've really struggled to score for the first month. And it's starting to come together a little bit. Jameer Young had a great week last week. I think he was Big Ten Player of the Week uh, at, for, for the terrific work that he did. Uh, so I, I think that this is a huge game for the Terps to get themselves back in the NCAA tournament conversation. They're not there now. Uh, they need a game like this. And then – Purdue's trying to chase a number one overall seed in the tournament. They obviously want to repeat as Big Ten uh, titleists. And they, I think they'd like to maybe avenge what happened in College Park a year ago. So it, it's another terrific game on the schedule. Uh, 30 seconds left, Mike. I'll give you one more. Uh, a big game for the new era of Syracuse basketball tonight as they are at Duke. Ten and three so far for Syracuse, but a good challenge tonight uh, at Cameron. Yeah, they, like I mentioned that pit win. They were down in that game. Could would have been easy to 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 sort of let it go, and and they fought back and did a good job. And but it's tough tough going into Cameron. Maybe not as tough though, uh, coming so soon off the holiday. Maybe not as many crazies in the house. Maybe not, uh, Mike. Tremendous job as always. Enjoy the games tonight. We will talk to you next week. And I hope the Steelers lose, Mike. I need the Bills to be in before they play the Dolphins on Sunday night. Go Ravens, Mike. The course of this morning. <laughs> Introducing Sports Injury Central's new feature, The Injury Edge, your NFL matchup 
cheat sheet see all the significant injury mismatches broken down by offense and defense to highlight where the advantages lie all for only $2.99 a week how can you even consider making a bet or setting your fantasy lineup without knowing the injury mismatches go to sixscore.com today and get this week's injury edge your gut says miami is going to win and you should take the over the gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. It looked like it was going in. It hit the, it hit the upright and bounced out and did not uh, go in. There's more scoring in an MLS soccer game than there is uh, this cotton ball. The Chargers didn't know what the hell to do with uh, Staley for years. They're a clown show in chief. Denver's got this issue, Gabe. Like, the Chiefs must just be sitting there going, wow, what a bunch of brain trust we work with in this division. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. We spent all offseason where the NFL said, hey, just so you guys know, Running backs don't matter. If we then this year give the MVP to a running back, the irony. I am disappointed that they lost to FAU because secretly I don't really like this FAU team very much. I don't, I don't know. They're just not for me. And now they've completely legitimized the owl. Game time decisions only on Sports Grid. Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. Fantasy Sports Today. They were saying there's no way. He could not possibly do this. He won't hold out. Pro League Soccer the powered by Marco. Scoring teams in the league. They have 80 goals so far. College Football Today. The Hawks team total in the first half is point five zero point five. Pro Football Today. Interesting props in this game, but I would be cautious laying this number here with the Houston Texans. In-game live all-access. In terms of these wild cards and in terms of the playoff. In-game live prime time. Uh, Rich, I don't know, man. This is this is just been one of those games that doesn't make a lick of sense In-game here. In-game live overtime. You want to give you over three to one on a pretty good team. It's hard not to take some flyers. Football full circle. Well, NFL officials stink. They always will stink and they'll always ruin the game. Yeah, that's, that's just part of what it is. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. are back for El Coast to Coast on a Tuesday. Carver High and Joe Lisi in for Scotty on Sports Grid and Sports Grid Radio. Great to have everybody with us here today. All right, Joe, I have a lot of things still to go over with you from these games last night. Uh, since we only have limited time here, let me quickly play you Harbaugh. Of course, he's been weak last two years, loses in the semis to Georgia and TCU, finally gets over the hump. They'll play for the national championship. He, of course, puts all the praise on J.J. McCarthy. Here he is. It was uh, right where we wanted to be. It's everything that we worked for, everything that we prepared for, everything we hoped for, uh, everything we trained and strained for. It and and uh, the team just was not going to be denied. J.J. said it when he walked off the same podium last year uh, in the semifinal game and said, we're going to be back. And uh, what he told me was, not only are we going to be back, we're going to win. And, uh, and, and there he did, you know. I mean, uh, and in overtime, Against Alabama, I think the last quarterback to win in overtime against Alabama was none other than Tom Brady. And uh, you know, I've said it before, but this is right here. This is this is the greatest quarterback in University of Michigan football, college football history. Uh, Joe, I, I thought he did. He made a couple big plays. Uh, let's calm down. Uh, they didn't win. I, I, I mean, I, he wasn't the sole. He wasn't the main reason they won that football game. I didn't think he was that great, Joe. Uh, to be quite honest with you, J.J. McCarthy, I didn't think he was that great. He was okay. He was above average. Okay. I mean, he threw for two, 221. Okay. He's not Tom Brady. Tom Brady single-handedly beat Alabama with the touchdown pass to Jeremy yeah. Tooman in the outback in the Orange Bowl. All right? I have that game on tape. Can we stop? He was 
He was 20 and 5 as a starter. All he did was light up Big Ten defenses. Can we stop already? Tom Brady, they make I, it sound like Tom Brady was a 500 quarterback in Michigan. I'll tell you this. He ain't going to be the best quarterback on the field in Houston on Monday night. He ain't going to be the best quarterback in that game. Guy on the other side is. Uh, we will get into that game, Joe, because we haven't really talked about it yet. When we come back, for El Coast to Coast, we got a couple hours to go here. Carver High and Joe Lisi in for Scotty Sports Grid, Sports Grid Radio. We're back after this. 